I'm Dan Collins with Mercy Medical Center in Baltimore, Maryland, and you're watching Medoscopy. Today, we depart the confines of our usual operating room set, bringing Medoscopy's cameras to Baltimore's Four Seasons Hotel, though not for the mojitos at the poolside bar. For three days in August, the Four Seasons hosts the 12th Annual Gynecologic Robotic Surgery Conference, led by course director Mercy's Dr. Dwight M. Dr. M. is the medical director of the Neil B. Rosenshine Institute for Gynecologic Care, the Gynecologic Oncology Center, and the National Institute of Robotic Surgery at Mercy. Dr. M., when I first met you in 1996, robotic GYN surgery was not an offering of Mercy. Uh, it's still pretty much in its infancy. According to the source, the surgical clinic, the first records of robotic-assisted surgery date to about the 1980s. When did you first become familiar with robotic surgery and why was that of interest to you? So Dan, I think the word robotic is really a misnomer because when people hear it, there's a robot, is it like R2D2, where's a robot? There is no robot then, it's just an instrument, but it's more than an instrument, we're talking about digital surgery. So to answer your question, it was in 2009 when I started using the Da Vinci system, which was really the first FDA approved robot and surgery. So uh, they, they got the FD approval in 2004 urology and 2005 for gynecology. So I was a bit sort of a late, you know, adopter in 2009 is when I got started. Hmm. Now what's the upside of robotic assisted surgery and why is this perhaps more preferable than traditional open surgery? Sure. So traditionally, people were cut open for abdominal surgery. They were either cut open up and down or across. And doctors went in and they spent, you know, an hour or two doing the surgery. The problem is recovery, right? So at a minimum of two, three days in the hospital, longer recovery, return to work in four to six weeks, just more pain and so on. So the key word here is not so much in robotic surgery as in minimally invasive surgery, right? You're giving them just a few tiny holes through which we can perform the surgery. Most of them go home the same day. They're back to work in some of my patients that used to stay for four to six weeks. They go home within a week. I mean, they go to work full time within a week. That's pretty impressive. Now, this national conference that's underway, you brought together a notable team of physicians from all across the country. You've had doctors from Texas, Los Angeles, California, Nevada, New York, North Carolina. So there's definitely an interest in this approach. Have you found your colleagues to be receptive to the idea? Absolutely. So as an example, you know, I'm a gynecologic oncologist, right? So every single gynecologic oncology fellowships where they get trained is almost exclusively robotic surgery. There's no straight laparoscopic surgery, very few open surgeries. So this is how the entire field has kind of gotten on the bandwagon, if you will. Mm. We'll take a break and we'll be back with the next segment of Medoscopy. For me as a gynecologic oncologist, I think some of the most important areas of research and innovation really have to do with minimally invasive surgery. We can shrink the cancer down with some chemotherapy. We can actually go in without those big cuts just a few tiny holes and have it perform laparoscopically, robotically. The patients go home the next day. To me, that's very, very exciting. Depending on where you're looking in our field, there are advances going on all the time. You have your standard chemotherapies, and then you have personalized medicine, and now immunotherapy, where we're actually using the body's own immune system to try to tackle these cancers. One of the things that it's really exciting that we can offer here at Mercy is uh, something called heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy. At the time of the big surgery when people have to have the ovarian cancer removed, we directly treat it with chemotherapy into the abdomen. And the patients, of course, are going to need to get adjuvant chemotherapy, but it's better well tolerated and better able to complete the treatment than what is being described with uh, intraperitoneal chemotherapy. I always see medicine and surgery as only a part of the equation of well-being really is more of a philosophical approach to get that individual to really buy into the positive outlook we see for her. Patient is obviously the most vital part of healthcare. 
and it's making sure that the patients are both aware of what is happening to them, what they're going to undergo, and that they stay as well informed as we can make them. Even we're very, very specialized and we are in the vanguard of a lot of the treatments. Mercy provides me the opportunity to establish a relationship with a patient where it's more like a one-on-one -on -one direct. Everyone has that same focus on the patient and what we do and uh, how we're going forward. And also taking the patient and their point of view and their desires into our plans. I will give all my patients all the options the data behind each option, and then let them decide. But a lot of the times we'll say, well, what do you think? So it's really a team effort. Patient-centered care to me means a devotion to the well-being of the patient, not only focusing on state-of-the-art medicine, but her overall well-being so that we can get an optimal result from our treatment. Tracy Tamaris is the mother of four, a tax preparer and real estate agent. So when she found out she needed a total hysterectomy. For a woman, it's difficult as it is, but for a single mom, it's even harder than I have my own business to, to be down. But just a few weeks ago, her doctor, Mercy Medical Center gynecological surgeon, Dr. Dwight M., performed Tracy's hysterectomy using the Da Vinci XI robot, an improved version of the Da Vinci robotic system. You can see things that you never uh, saw before. Well, how does it help the patient? Uh, that means uh, more precise surgery, less bleeding. Uh, because it is more precise, the patient will get a better surgery and they'll recover more quickly. Tracy's surgery was done with just one small incision in her belly button. Easier now, Dr. M says, with the XI's thinner robotic arm. But now that the arms are thinner, they can move more easily. It gives you, the surgeon, a wider field of view and wider range of motion. Right now, Dr. M says the Da Vinci XI is FDA approved for hysterectomies and the removal of benign ovaries, and it can be used for most patients. And for Tracy, she was back to work in five days. I feel much better. Even with the recovery process, um, after having the hysterectomy, I physically feel better, less pain. Um, the recovery was, was pretty easy. For those just joining us, we're speaking with Mercy Gynecologic Oncologist Dr. Dwight M, who is leading the 12th Annual Gynecologic Robotic Surgery Conference here at the Four Seasons Hotel in downtown Baltimore. Are there different robots for different medical disciplines, or are the rob robots that you're using now more kind of multi-use? Uh, like you could do a minimally invasive hysterectomy, but a urologist could use it for a prostate cancer surgery. That would be correct, and in fact, it first got approved in urology. So the Da Vinci system is what I use. It is the most widely used system in the world uh, for not only gynecology, but urology, general surgery, colorectal surgery, bariatric surgery, so it's a wide variety of uses. But there are other robots not named Da Vinci. For example, in orthopedics, there's a robot called Mako, and Mercy has one. In fact, we just got a system called Ion. It's for pulmonary, for lung surgery. So there are other robots, and many other companies are trying to develop, not so much mimic, but develop new systems in robotics so they can you know, add every, you know, so it adds to the whole armamentarium. Hmm. Now, how do you go about discussing the robotic option with uh, patients? What are their typical concerns? So I rarely will use the term robot because it's really not a robot, as I said, right? So it's right. minimally invasive surgery. So I will tell them, look, you have two options. Do you want to be cut open, to lay it open and have the surgery? Or do you want to have the small holes where I can go in and, and perform the surgery? And don't say, uh, so I heard about this robot. What's a robot? I didn't make it very clear. You sound like oh, I go into the operating room, I hook you up to a robot, I go out and get a cup of coffee, and the surgery is over. That's not like that. So what I tell them is, I am the robot, right? It's in a way because it's only an instrument that will help you perform the surgery, even in a, a more efficient and superior manner to the traditional open or laparoscopic surgery. Have we begun to see research that indicates a trend toward improved patient outcomes using robotic-assisted surgery like you do? Absolutely. Uh, as I said, you know, right, you know, shorter recovery, shorter time back to work, minimal pain or less pain. 
So it's really a no-brainer, but for the surgeon, it's really it's important. It's not like you go in and you know, do the surgery, you could have an open, no, but what we're talking about is digital surgery. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. I remember prior to the iPhone that came out in 2007, I held on to my razor, Motorola razor. It was like the best thing, right? Oh my God, it was so thin, it was amazing. But what, does the smart, what do smartphones have that the traditional phones, the, the cell phones, did not have. It's all about the apps, right? It's all about the apps. So we're moving from this minimally invasive surgery to digital surgery. So imagine if you're a surgeon, right? When I get a Facebook page post and there actually there's a picture with everybody's name labeled, right? So that's where we're headed. It's digital surgery where the actually the, the robot knows exactly what your preferences are, how many times you've used certain system, and it can begin to label structures in the pelvis. Can you imagine if you are a surgeon, because you know, sometimes it's very difficult, right? Everything is, is stuck and it's hard to know, it's hard to orga identify organs, but the mission will do that for you. It will tell you, it will label things for you. That's the future. We're only maybe five, 10 years away from that, so we're talk moving from an entire, it, it's, it's, a, it's a shift in paradigm. You go in, the surgeon does all this, but, but there's digital surgery, so-called new apps, they're gonna help the surgeon. Now, you're a champion of minimally invasive robotic approach, um, and uh, one in particular that has an interesting acronym, um, IMSWAY. Can you tell me a little bit about IMSWAY? It, it is an acronym. So, you know, I'm a firm believer in, quote unquote, spreading the gospel, because I want to be able to train not, you know, surgeons who will then become better surgeons. So, as an example, then, people that are here today, they're not novice surgeons who want to dabble into robotics. These people are leaders in their own community. So when they go back, they're going to train and teach all the other surgeons. And I've come to realize, you know, so we, we got apps with phones, but why don't we have that uh, better system in surgery? Why are we still using a textbook that's 100 years old? That made no sense. And the reason for that is we're still relying on these old diagrams and pictures. They're truly 100 years old. And so I said, well, how can I make these people better surgeons? I can put up a slide of any, you know, organ in the pelvis, and they'll look at it. Okay, I hear you. And then, but when they go back to their hospital next week, it's not going to make them better surgeons. So IMSWAY stands for I-M-S-W-A-Y, which is an acronym. It starts with the actual step with which you can do the entire pelvic surgery. So I stands for, as an example, I know it's not for this talk, but it stands for infundibular pebble ligament. That's where you start your surgery. This is actually, to me, as you know, almost like a uh, revolutionary concept because we were always told when we were residents and in training, that's a structure that you just want to stay away from. Mm -hmm. And I'm flipping 180 degrees, and I'm saying that's the structure that not only you need to it's not a matter of avoiding, but that's going to be your best friend. So, you know, you keep your friends close and your enemy closer. That's my, you know, my mantra. So I want to say, this is how you start. I come up with a technique. It's not really a technique, but on how to identify the pelvic anatomy so we can train these people to become better surgeons. If I have an app, a Google map, and says, you know, how do we get to Manhattan from you, right? They can show you a list of things, but if, if you don't, if, wouldn't it be nice if it actually tells you how do you, this is what they, they do, right? They tell you exactly how far you should drive before you make a turn and so on. But that's, that's what Ims Way is all about. Hmm. Would you say that um, uh, in, in the course of time um, that robotic surgery, you know, again, for lack of a better word, um, will pretty much be the gold standard for GYN surgery? There is no doubt in my mind, Dan, that, that digital surgery, not so much robotic surgery, is going to be the gold standard in the near future. As an example, you know we've got electric vehicles, right? And people are like, oh, you know what? We had that 100 years ago. So what's the big deal? You got gas versus electricity, but those for people who do not understand the concept of the new electric vehicle, but what happens, it's just computer with wheels, right? That's what it's gonna be. It's surgery, so it's all these instruments are gonna be, they're so digitalized, they're gonna be software upgrades and so on. It's going to revolutionize the entire uh, surgery, but it's so much more of a revolution rather than revolution because we're just in its infancy. So I know people are like, oh, robot doing the surgery. Again, I just make that very clear. It's not really a robot doing the surgery.
Well, I was going to say, you mentioned just earlier that, in a sense, you are the robot. You're the uh, artificial, though real, as it were, intelligence of the machine. You're applying that to the robot. So ultimately, really what it boils down to is this is really a fascinating and wonderful tool that you can use, but it's still in the hands of the physician. It's still in your hands. So the more skilled you are, the more you're going to be able to get out of this device for the better outcome of the patient. Would you say that's correct? That, that is so true, Dan, because ultimately it's a surgeon. But imagine, w would you rather see a movie using a 19-inch black and white monitor? Would you want to go to IMAX and watch it in 3D with all the surround sound? That's what we are talking about. So that's, that's where we're headed, and that's where we are now. Anything else you'd like to add about you know, why this is important? You know, as patients come to you, they, have, they may be dealing with all sorts of different issues, cancer, uh, whatnot, and being able to offer them this that you couldn't offer them just maybe 15 years ago. Then I think the important thing is there are no shortcuts, right? There, we're not taking any shortcuts, whether it's, you know, straight laparoscopy or robotic. We're doing the exact same surgery, actually even better because we can see tenfold better. We can, we can manipulate instruments. We can manipulate organs in a much more, in much finer way. And yet the recovery is faster, less pain. So everybody benefits. The doctors, patients, and everybody, and the medical field as a whole, and society. Thank you, Dr. M, for your time and your candor. I'm hoping our viewers had the opportunity uh, to learn a little bit more about you, about the work that you're doing in the robotic-assisted surgery, and where we may be headed in the years to come. And thank you for watching. On behalf of myself, our guest, Dr. Dwight M, the Mercy staff, and the Sisters of Mercy, we wish you good health and humor. And until we gather again, may the road rise up to meet you. Hello, I'm Dr. Dwight Im, Medical Director of the National Institute of Robotic Surgery and the Institute for Gynecologic Care at Mercy. I want to encourage you to make your reservation for the 13th Annual Minimally Invasive Gynecologic Robotic Surgery Conference held in Baltimore on September 21st and 22nd. This symposium is regarded as one of the preeminent courses on gynecologic robotic surgery, and I'm proud to have had participants from across the country and around the world. Our renowned faculty offers experience, insights, and best in-practice standards to ensure participants gain clinical knowledge and a better understanding of robotic surgery. Collaborative discussions, informative lectures, and review of complex case studies have made our symposium the preferred choice of surgeons year after year. Innovation and Integration, Principles of Advanced Robotic Gynecologic Surgery, September 21st and 22nd. Register today so that we can reserve your space. I look forward to seeing you in Baltimore this fall. Thank you.